Hi, and welcome to the first ever Latinx Kidlit Book Festival. Hola y bienvenidos al primer Latinx Kidlit Festival. Estamos aquí on this panel called No Words Storytelling Through Pictures. Um, please read our anti-harassment policy in the chat box, wherever that is. And we have here with us today several amazing panelists. I want to introduce them all. First, I'll introduce myself. I'm Adriana Hernandez Bergstrom, and I illustrated the book Boomer at Your Service, which is about a service dog finding his place in the world. And here I have with me today Axur Eneas. You can wave when I say your name. He's a comic book artist from Mexico City, and he's the creator of Tutorial. And you're also a showrunner, if I understand correctly, for a cartoon show on, on Cartoon Network Latino America. He's also the illustrator of the graphic novel Student Ambassador The Missing Dragon by Ryan Estrada. Hello and welcome, Axul. We also have here today Carlos Aponte, Puerto Rican artist residing in Jersey City, illustrator, author, teacher. Work has been influenced by fashion illustration, graphic design, political cartoons, animation, and fine arts. He's published two children's books, A Season to Be, a book about color seen through the insect fashion show, and Across the Bay, about his own personal experience of looking for his father in San Juan, Puerto Rico. His clients, I know, he has a client list. That's fancy. Wow. His clients include Sports Illustrated, Men's Journal, Coca-Cola, Cam Camel, Parliament and Root Magazine, The New York Times, The Washington Post, Tyler L. Vibe Moma, Latina Magazine, and British GQ. What? A long time ago. <laughs> I know, but still, that's an amazing list. Welcome, welcome. We also have here Thank Juana you. Medina. Juana Medina was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia. She's author and illustrator of multiple children's books, including the chapter book series, Juana and Lucas, which was a winner of the Pura Pel Pre Award. Yeah, and two International Latino Book Awards. I know. Juana's passion for storytelling has led her to work on projects with numerous clients, among them the Library of Congress, ESPN, PBS, as well as publishers such as Candlewick, Chronicle Books, Penguin Random House, Simon & Schuster, Hot & Mifflin Hardcore, and she went to RISD, Rhode Island School of Design, like me, at the same time, yeah. but we didn't know each other. What? And uh, I'm a small world. And as a queer Latina who never found herself represented in books as a child, Juana enjoys visiting schools and libraries around the country, encouraging children to read and finding the power in their own personal stories. And last but not least, we have Raul the Third. Raul is an award-winning illustrator, author, and artist living in Boston. His work centers around contemporary Mexican-American experiences and his memories of growing up in El Paso, Texas, and Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. He was nominated for a Texas Blue Bonnet Award in 26, 2017 for his illustrations of No Riders in Space. And he also got a prestigious Pura Bel Pre Award for his illustrations um, by the American Library Association, also for Low Riders, but to the center of the earth. And he was also a contributor to SpongeBob comic series. <laughs> and his latest books are Vamos, Let's Go to Market and Vamos, Let's Go Eat, which were his... Uh, first author illustrator projects. Welcome, welcome everybody. Can you Thank tell you. me a little bit about Thank your you. latest books? I'm gonna start, you guys ready? Yes. So you're gonna talk a little bit about your books. I'm gonna start with Aksur. Can you tell me about your latest book? Yes, uh, this year came out Student Ambassador on the Missing Dragon. It was written by Ryan Estrada and it's the adventures of Joseph, a student ambassador, traveling to Ruta and meeting uh, King Nukata and helping him to escape bad guys and to save his country from bad guys that, that are trying to destroy it with a war. Uh, it's a really fun story, story and it's, you can also learn a little bit about the basics of Korean in it and learn about, learn about Seoul, Korea. And I'm happy that uh, just yesterday, it was announced by Iron Circus Comics, the publisher, that we're making a sequel. Cool. And the sequel is yes. called Student Ambassador, The Silver City. And I'm happy to do this the next book because Joseph visits Mexico. So I'm going to oh, be yay. able to know Zacatecas. <laughs> yeah, I read it. I thought it was really, really cool. I love how, yeah, you get to learn a little bit about a different culture from the point of view of this child ambassador. And uh, yeah, it's really funny, actually. Very humorous story. So I thought it was really fun. Um, next, Juana, do you want to tell us about your latest and greatest? What are you working on? Um, or, what or what just got published? <laughs> or what uh, just got published? Well, 2020 was a year to work at home, which was great, mostly. Um, 
and uh, Juan and Lucas uh, three, the third in the series is coming out next year. Juan and Lucas, muchos changes. Um, I'm very excited that it just went to production. So um, finally done on my end. Uh, so we'll see how it come out, comes out next year. Uh, I'm also working on a, on a series of three um, for Versify, which I'm very excited about called, uh, the first one will be I Will. Uh, and uh, it's running really fast, which is very, very exciting when a book happens really, really fast. Um, and there's another book coming out next year that I illustrated for Jan Carr called uh, Star of the Party. So there's a lot coming out. Um, yes. uh, I can't wait for the, for the tangible books to, to, to be out there in the world. So Juana Lucas one was, you know, Juana like meeting, well, Juana is, is the little girl and Lucas is her dog. And in the second one, her mom gets married, right? Or is it the first I one? I hate to mom? say this, but I <laughs> I'm having some audio issues for some reason, so I couldn't hear your question quite well. Oh, yeah, I'll just put it here in the in the chat. So my question is, so what's going on in the third one? Is it more family changes? Oh, what's going on? Are in you the third allowed one? to say? Um, I think so. There's someone else coming into Juana's life. Um, <gasps> oh no, and she is not thrilled about it. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna so, guess, but I don't want to. I don't want to mess. Yeah, I don't want to give any spoilers. I think, you might have a good a good good guess about it. Um, yes. So we'll see. I'm excited to share it. It is it is loosely based on the, on real life. Uh, I already shared it with the actual person, um, and they approved. Uh, okay. The book, so that's a big deal. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! How that, very exciting. Happy to share it with the world. This is something in common with a lot of the panelists in this group. Carlos, I'm going to ask you next about your last book, uh, Across the Bay. And because they're all personal stories, Aksura, except yours. Yours is not personal. You're not an ambassador. You're not a, like a secret agent slash ambassador kid. <laughs> but, no, but it's a little bit based in the personal life of Ryan Estrada. Oh, so okay. I was okay. happy he allowed me. He told you about his life to inform the yes. illustration? Okay, cool. That's really neat. Carlos, could you tell us about your latest book? Well, uh, my, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new at this. I, this is my second book. Um, so Across the Bay was the book that I was published um, this year. Um, which I won an award, I was very happy about that. And it's about a kid looking for his father in El San Juan, which is really my story. But when I went looking for my father in El San Juan, I was much older, but I made this character much younger. Um, but the book is more than that, it's, it's about really looking at the, at the value of your family, your culture, the people that surrounded you. And it really kind of a showcase of El San Juan, the, the, the place where I used to visit a lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. The illustrations were gorgeous. I love Thank the inky you. line. It was really not lovely. And Thank very, you. like, for me, it was heart-wrenching. Like, it was like, <laughs> oh, my God. But I loved it. I loved your illustration style a lot. Thank um, you. I can't wait to see what, you're, what you come up with next. Uh, Raul, you're up next. Tell us about your latest. Well, so um, it's it's been a fun, a fun few years. Um, Last year, as as everyone knows, uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, this book was published. Uh, Vamos, let's go to the market, and it received a Pura Belpre honor. And this year, we followed it up with uh, Vamos, uh, let's go eat. And uh, these books have been so successful that Versify, welcome to Versify, Juan. It's so it's so awesome that you will be joining our family. Um, or that you have joined the family, you know what I mean? But uh, th these books have been so uh, successful that uh, Versify signed me on to a 10-book deal. Wow, wow. So, congratulations. Do you want to tell the kids what Versify is? Because they um, might so, not know what that is. Yeah, so Versify is an imprint uh -huh. that is under Houghton Mifflin, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, and the books are curated by an amazing uh, poet, uh, Newberry honor winning uh, author named Kwame Alexander. Yes. His latest book, uh, The Undefeated, was illustrated by Kadir Nelson. And he is basically like the curator of our line of books. And so it's just been such a, a wonderful experience because at the moment, we're a, a, a small uh, family, but every year, you know, I, I was one of the first six, but every year 
the family grows bigger and bigger and uh, we're, we're seeing so many amazing books coming through and being published and it's it's really exciting to be a very part of exciting. it. Very, very That's exciting. Very, very exciting to see like um both yeah. Kadir Nelson and Kwame Alexander both take the helm of that. It's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing. I'm so excited for all the what well, I read Undefeated earlier this summer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trying to think yeah. of where my questions are. Um, okay, so let's begin the questions. All right. Um, so the way I'm just gonna like ask the question and then I'll I'll just direct, you know so that we can figure out who is going first. So the first question I have is, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? And I'm gonna start with Aksur, then Raul, then Carlos, and then Juana for this one. Uh, yeah, I was lucky that my mom's an architect, but she always wanted to be a painter. So when she saw that I was enjoying to draw in it, and since I was a little kid, she supported me since the very first moment. So she always gave me comic books, uh, art books, a lot so of lucky. pencils. Yeah, so I was like six, seven years old. I thought, oh, I'm going to do this all my life. That's awesome. And yeah, so that, there's that from that moment to college to now, she has always been supportive of me being an artist. She is proud of me that I could be a visual artist because she she did she didn't have support of her of my grandpa so she wanted to support me to be an artist that's really really cool no uh oh yeah i mean i've i've wanted to be a a, a comic book artist and a cartoonist and uh, basically my idea as a kid was uh and everybody laughs at you when you say it when you're a young kid you know it was to be a famous artist uh, and so that was my goal from the youngest age, as young as I can remember, maybe 10, 11. I started to, uh, mi abuelita trabajaba en el mercado Cuauhtémoc. And right there, there was this amazing magazine uh, stand. And I don't know if you've ever seen these stands, but they're like, have clotheslines and clothespins. And from top to bottom, they're covered with uh, uh, all sorts of magazine from Alarma to uh, 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 comic books like uh, Me Mexi uh, Marvel comics, but in Spanish. So, you know, so the thing was La Masa, you know, stuff like that. And so my carbon paper, and I used to trace the drawings and then print them onto other uh, sheets of paper. Uh, and then when I was about 15 or 16, I found out about this. I lived in El Paso, Texas. I grew up in El Paso, Texas. I, I got a job at a comic book shop when I was 15 and I found out about this place called the San Diego Comic Book Convention. And oh I started a portfolio and I would, from the age of 15 all the way until 20, I would catch the bus. It was called Rapidos Turismos from El Paso <laughs> to Los Angeles and from Los Angeles to San Diego. And I, I started showing my, my I portfolio. You were ahead of the age. curve. You were ahead of the curve then. I didn't yeah. know about San Diego Comic Con until I was like 28. Oh yeah, there was no movies uh, there uh, being uh, promoted at that time either. So it was all about comics. That is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, Carlos, you're up. Did you always well, know? Well, I I uh, I was born with a pencil in my hand. I mean, I the great thing about being an artist is that you create this world, this imagination. So for me, I didn't want to go out to play with other kids. I wanted to be in the corner playing, drawing. And I I remember my my cousin who used to live in New York came with all these toys and, you know, and Hot Wheels. And I said, what do you want to play with me? I said, like, I'm drawing. I was, I, I was already <laughs> focused on what I wanted to do. And so, Raul, I want to tell you something very interesting. Um, I grew up with, with uh, a lot of Mexican pop culture in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And I remember receiving La Prensa was the, the, the you know, the company that made the, the Marvel superheroes in Spanish in, in Mexico. Yeah. So I thought Mexico was the place for superheroes, so I wanted to go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got, you know, la, el, uh, el Sorprendente Hombre Araña, which is Spider-Man, and, yeah. you know, yeah, Los Hombres yeah. X, all those people, you know, all those characters. Yeah. And then one day, um, another family member came from New York and brought me the comic books in English, and I was very confused. <laughs> 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 and then I realized, I realized that it was all, you know, coming yeah. from you know, from from America to Mexico, Mexico to Puerto Rico, which is what was really amazing. 
but yes, um, all my life, I, I, I just love to be in this world. And everybody knows here that all of us, that it's just a, the best place to be is, is inside that head and creating images and characters and stories, which is like, I don't know, something natural for all of us. Agreed, agreed. Juana, how about you? Did you always know you wanted to be an artist? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Contrary to all of you, I think I was too stubborn to see it myself. Um, I grew up in a family that uh, where creativity was just part of the norm. Um, and everybody, pretty much everybody drew or had some sort of artistic outlet. Um, but it was sort of part of a second language in a way. So my grandfather was a brain surgeon, but he explained everything through little drawings um, and diagrams. And my grandmother was an amazing carpenter and she was a great drafts person, but she never, I mean, it was just a, a way of explaining, just a, like another language. So it was never the, the main thing. Um, wow. So it took me a really long time to realize that I could be an artist um, and uh, and I didn't take it seriously for a really, really long time. I just thought everybody could draw. I remember people saying, oh, I can't draw. And it was like, do you need a pen same. or paper? Like, well, why, why can't you draw? What does that even mean? I had the um, same problem so. with people. I was like, what do you mean you can't draw? Wait, no, really? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, my uncle's Did you need a paper? Like, what, what exactly. on? Exactly. Did you yeah. need the pen? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Exactly. So when did you figure it out? When did you, you know, life, with life took me on a very strange and winding journey. I studied physical therapy and worked as a physical therapist for a while in Colombia. And that ended up coming to the U.S. as an immigrant and life just <laughs> went upside down and, and, and things just shaped a different, very different way. Um, and uh, I, I remember taking a, a, a class just because I was trying to get certified as a physical therapist here. And I was just going crazy studying anatomy, anatomy and biology and pathology and all these things. And, and I took a, a class on um, uh, art critique and drawing. And, and the teacher ended up being an amazing um, person who just shook me in a way that was necessary. And he said, well, if you're not making millions as a physical therapist, you should, you should definitely be drawing and take it more seriously. And of course, it's a much longer story. But uh, that ended up driving me into art school and uh, and 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 trying a whole different thing in life. Uh, I'm glad so I did. Cool. Yeah, me yeah. too. I'm so glad you did because I love I love your line. <laughs> I love your. So this is actually going to lead me into my le my next question, which is who do you look up to and who are your creative influences? And I'm going to start with with Juana because I saw your line in Juana and and Lucas, and I immediately was like, oh, this reminds me of. I'm not gonna say. I'm gonna let you see if I'm gonna see if he was one of your one of your influences. I'll I'll I'll, I'll fill the gap. Uh, Quentin Blake uh, and Jules Pfeiffer and Saul Steinberg and Dick Bruna and um, Kino, of course. Uh, and uh, you know there 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 are so many names, so many people I can think of. Um, you know uh, Ronald Searle and Jean Jacques Sempe and. Um, so many people that I just was fascinated by seeing their line and, and, and just so humbled by the work that they have done. So, I mean, especially with Kino, you look at his work and it's like, well, what, what can I do? You know, I know. <laughs> it's like the, the yeah. least amount to make the most impact. It's really good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. It's, How about it's you, Ron? Who are your influences? You have a, um, we're like going to come from a completely different school, like brush. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't, you know, I I, um, I have so many different influences, but I, I like to try to be influenced by a, a various things or have been, you know, everything. Like I, I used to do a lot of fine art museum exhibitions, gallery exhibitions, and I always told people I have a, I had a mercado aesthetic just because I really enjoyed seeing the way my tios and tias, my, my abuelita, they would set up the puestos at the mercado with just a, a, a wide array of, of visual information, you know. Uh, I also like knockoffs. Like I like things that look like knockoffs. And and in, in the mercado, you would see like all these Mexican knockoffs. You'd see like like weird uh, uh, adaptations of, of of popular culture. Like so, you would see like back in the day, it was like e a piñata of E.T. or the Powerpuff Girls or Spider Man, <laughs> and it looked like Spider Man, but it wasn't really Spider Man. You know what I mean? Uh, and then um, I didn't go to art school. 
but uh, I worked at a video store and a comic book store for uh, two, like a decade at least. And so I was I was watching three to four movies a day, reading hundreds of comic books a day, and all of that information is just like in my head. And, and that was your schooling. And to that this day, like I, I'm just constantly regurgitating stuff that I, I love uh, and that's deep inside of me. So yeah, it goes into know. the Raul black box and out throw. Boom, style. there it is on the <laughs> paper and ready to go. Love it, love it. Carlos, what about you? You too? Uh, Raul, so Raul, I agree with you. I mean, the more uh, the more you put in your visual library in your mind, the more you're able to access so much. I mean, the more you read, the more you 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 see art, art, and different artists. You kind of like have this ability to access things that think people will say, "How you get that?" So, I don't know, but it's a mix of this and that. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, I've been so many things, but. Uh, Antonio Lopez, a, fa a fashion illustrator. Uh, I love the work of Leo Spinoza, of course. I know he's a friend of mine too. And then uh, an artist from Puerto Rico, Arnaldo Rocha. So my, my, what I love is it's, it comes from so many different sources, you know? And I'm sure that, I mean, that is kind of like, it gave me insights in different areas that helped me to understand or, or really put into, into images something that I've, at one point I thought it was complex, but now it's easier because I understand it from different point of views. I love I love your line too. You have this like thick, this thick and thin that is just so, um, how can you say like un, like nothing is holding you back. It's like, like yeah. this is gonna be thin and it's gonna be thick and there's gonna be a splat here and it's gonna, <laughs> I love it, the confidence. Thank you. Thank There's you. a confidence Thank in your line. I love it. Yeah, Xur, so who are your influences? Because you have a lot of cinema in your in your in your comic book, in your comic style. Yeah. Uh, well, I really, Carlos, I also read a lot of uh, superhero published uh, comic books <laughs> from Editorial Beat. That uh, here in Mexico, so it was with Batman was the first, oh, I want to do comic books, I want to draw something like this, but I really fast, I, I realized that I, I, I haven't, I, I don't have fun drawing superheroes, super realistic, <laughs> but I, I don't know, it's like, I, I feel I, something is lost, like I have fun when I'm drawing cartoons, and I used to read more uh, Garfield, well, the, public, the Mexican editions of Garfield, uh, Pinus that it was named here Carlitos, Mm -hmm. uh, Mafalda, of course, from Kino, and I was reading a lot of comic strips in some very old. Like I didn't realize the Mexican editions I was reading from from paper comic strips of United States from the 1940s. The the drawings are cute, so it's like That's oh yeah, I, I get this. You're like mm -hmm. yeah, Father's No Best and things like yeah. comic strips like that that are really old, but they were cheap here, so I was reading it and I, that uh, fit me a lot. And with the time, I also loved cartoons a lot, especially now that I'm working as an animator and as a comic book artist, I realized that the thing that most influenced how I drew the panels is thinking of like animation, like there's uh, still frames from this. So when I do a, an action sequence for Student Bus or one of my comic books, I'm thinking in the key poses, the key frames mm -hmm. to make it more funny. So I uh, this this month I've been watching all cartoons on Disney and I can see that Goof Troop, Darwin Dog, DuckTales. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it in your comic actually. Like the way you slowed down, like you had this action sequence where the kids are being kidnapped in a box, and like the way you you broke down the panels, it was like it was like a cartoon. It remind, it was a lot like yeah, like cinema. I can see it. Yes. Yeah, because... I did some stop motion animation and I remember the keyframes and all of this. <laughs> and it reminded me of that kind of look, like it's ready to be a cartoon. You're, that been a lot of my experience now, and especially because I'm, I'm, I'm the writer, storyboard, director, animator from my show. So yeah. I have to Tutorial. do all this breakdown. Tutorial. People Tutorial. should check it out because it is hilarious. Especially oh, if you speak you. Spanish, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it. Yeah. That's so, really cool. Uh, cartoons may influence. Yeah, I can definitely see it. Um, okay, so some of you kind of answered this when you asked, when I asked you about always wanting to be an artist, but when you finally decided that you were going to work in the arts, I especially want to know if like you did not have a happy reaction from your family. Cause that was my, like my family was like, Ay, Adriana, 
tú vas a ser pintora con brocha gorda, like you're never going to be clean, right? Like you're going to be, and I was like, oh, and then I ended up being a teacher for two years to satisfy the family. And then and I was like, no, I'm really not happy doing this. So Juan, I want to hear from you, girl. What, what was your family's reaction to you saying I'm going to be in the arts? They were like, por fin. Oh, really? at last, she, <laughs> she left her terquedad behind and she's at last, you know, paying attention to what she should be doing in life. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah. I, I was actually surprised that I didn't find any resistance. They were like, ah, finally. Yeah. Yeah. My mom was happy when I, when I finally decided to go back to kids' books. That was when she was happy because I had uh -huh. been, I've done greeting cards and I've done like commercial art, you know, and like graphic design and the web design and all that stuff. And like, I was a knitwear designer. I've really, like, done it all, right? Like all wow. the, I did my rounds. I was a scenic artist and I painted for theaters and that's where the brocha gorda thing, my grandfather was like, having a heart attack. Oh yeah, tu vagina de la ópera para, para pintar. And like, we came from Cuba and we brought all the opportunities to use the like, <laughs> Anyone else? No, just me? No, no guilt trips from immigrant parents? No? No, I didn't have any of that stuff. You're so lucky. <laughs> I, I remember um, my, you need to, a backup plan. And I was going to college at the time. And then I was like, oh yeah, here's my ba backup plan. And I dropped out of college. <laughs> no, I, I went all the way through with theater. I was a scenic artist, like all the way there. I got my degree in scenic art and printmaking, which are like the most practical degrees you can ever get. And then was a teacher. So. They, they were mad at me at first, but now that now that I, uh, things are going so well, they're like, I, I, I have the most exciting stories to tell, you know? <laughs> yes, that's what I think. I had, I had some that's good times, good. some good times to be in, in theater. Okay, oh yeah, which leads me to what was your first job and um, what was your first creative job and how did, or, or how did you get your start? And we'll start with Aksur. And I... It, would, it took me a while to start in this because I was, I always wanted to be an artist, but I was a little bit scared of not getting a job. So I went to graphic design school and was doing, learning illustration, but also graphic design. So I thought, well, if anything, I can do also uh, advertising. And I tried to work one year in advertising and I was absolutely terrible and on it. It was embarrassing how bad that was it. So it was, I was lucky that after a year that flopping and failing terribly, I could start working in um, education, artistic education here in Mexico City. And in a, a apartment, it's an artist uh, art center. And mm -hmm. I was helping to do the illustration and teaching classes about uh, multimedia, mm -hmm. uh, multimedia and and art. So it was a mixture of video games, illustrations, and digital art. So that was my first like place where I could explore arts. And after that, I started working in animation and comic books. Cool. Uh, Carlos, what about you? Where did you start? Well, um, I have a story. I, I went to high school and I have a great teacher, art teacher. And uh, by the time I was in high school, I was winning an award doing painting, you know? And then by the end of uh, when I was about to graduate, uh, she, my artist, she asked me, so what do you want to do? I said, well, I want to become an artist. I said, no, you're going to be become a fashion, a fashion designer. Really? I'm like, what? I have no idea, no concept of fashion design. But she put me that in my brain that I could do it. And I began to sketch and she brought me like magazines wow. and I began to, be I became a fashion designer. And I, went, I know then I went to I went to Parsons in New York and I came back I, I didn't finish because it was very expensive and then I was I she kind of she kind of guided me and I became a fashion a fashion designer for a while but then I went back to what I love which was drawing so from fashion design to fashion illustration to graphic and then now into doing it's just drawing so it was it was quite a ride <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. It definitely sounds like it. And Raul, you mentioned you mentioned that okay, so you started working in a video store and you were doing like the graphite copies of stuff, and then you went to painting and you had like your crazy gallery shows. Yeah. And then how did you end up in kids? But like what was the, the transition? Um, so um, you know, one of the great things about being an artist, and I always I always tell young young kids this, um, is don't be 
define what kind of artist you are because if you define yourself as a certain type of, of artist, then you miss out on a, on a world of opportunities and excitement. That's and right. uh, I moved to, to Boston oh, maybe 20 years ago. And I followed the love of my life up here to Boston, Elaine Bay, whose name you see on every one of my books yeah, because she is, is the colorist of, of the world of Vamos, does a, an amazing job. But um, while she was going to school, I was basically trying to do everything. A lot of her friends were trying to get into gallery shows and I'd go to the galleries and I'd be like, I can do this. <laughs> and so uh, I've had two solo museum exhibitions um i would i would get really hungry right and i would wa i would go buy a a, a a taco shop and i would look at their menu i'd be like this is a terrible menu i can design a better <laughs> one for you if you nice. give me free food and so i have like restaurants up here in boston where i could still go in years later and eat for free they're still um, using your menu what is yeah and so and then i also i also um all during this time, I would I would make zines, so I became a part of the zine community, and I would I would uh, draw and uh, write my own comic books. I would I always have friends in low places because my friends at Kinkos would give me free copies, and I would make multiple copies of my books, oh my and I would goodness. send them all over the country to people I hope to one day work with, people I admired, and one oh. of those people turned out to be Kathy Camper. Okay. And Kathy Camper is the writer of uh, Low Writers in Space. And she called me up one day and said, hey, I have this idea for a book. And she gave me the synopsis. And I said, this is exactly the kind of book I wanted to read when I was so you a were kid. just like randomly sending your stuff out. And one of them ends up being Kathy Camper. No, you send your stuff to Kathy, right? What's no. that? Did you send it to Kathy? Or no, no. Just, just, oh my uh, God. just, it just, it just got out. around. It just got around, yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, so that, that's kind world. of been that's kind of been the the story of my life though, where where things just just kind of happen in this way. But you know, you you you. you, you, you I agree. You, you put, put it out, out there. there. Yeah. No, yo, I did put it out there, but I was always ready to accept the opportunity that Got came it. my way, and yeah. so that's why I've I've done so many different things. If people ask me, hey, have you ever painted a mural? Absolutely. And then I go home and say, how, oh how to paint a mural. <laughs> <laughs> That's me too. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> also me too. But yeah, I, I always say, you know, just have as much fun as you can. And um, the world can for you, you know. Good deal. Good deal. Juana, what about you? You, you said you went from physical therapy, right? You went from physical therapy and then you left that and you went to art school. And then your first creative job was a graphic design. Or, uh, well, my first creative job was trying to do any job I could. Uh, while I was in in uh, at RISD in graphic design as an immigrant, it was very expensive to pay for for art school um, as an international student, and I, I I had a very strict limit on the on the amount of hours that I could work in the U.S. So I was looking. I mean, talk about being hungry! It was everywhere, you know. I, and, and so it was amazing because I ended up creating all sorts of clients all over the world uh, without even feeling intimidated just because of the need. I, I was just needing it so badly that I was like writing to people in the Netherlands and Spain and Mexico like, and oh, wherever too. I could find, you know, Chile, Argentina, wherever I could find a project just to try to make sure that I could keep going. Um, awesome. So it was just, I, I, I think if I had had time to think, I would have been completely paralyzed by the daunting idea of, just as you were saying, Raul, like, oh, have you done a mural? Sure, I have to do it because I have to eat, you know? And so it wasn't, I, I, I didn't really think much of it. Um, and, and that helped me in, in, in great ways to guarantee that I could get a visa as an artist and so on as a you know as, as an immigrant just looking always forward on how to guarantee that i could stay here but at the same time it uh it filled me with experiences that um you know i i was listening to carlos say at one point i thought it was very complex and i thought what a beautiful line because that's how i felt you know it was just so complex that i could not even look at it it was just a matter of 
just keep going, just keep drawing, just send out whatever it is they're asking for, just <laughs> Google it, figure it out, but you have to keep going. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I would not be yeah. able to read, I would not be able to re redo any of the steps I took to get here. It would yeah. be like, there you go. <laughs> I, my hair would immediately turn white. I'd be like, no oh my way. God, how did I do that? <laughs> All right, so in this next portion, we're gonna get questions from students. Students have submitted questions to you, to specific people on this panel. And I, if it's not a video, I'll read the question. But I think the first okay. one is a video. Okay. And it's for Raul, I believe. Hello, and I have a question about vomino about vominos. Let's go eat. And why is the main character Lobo? Why is the main character Lobo? That's a great question. So his name. This is him right here. His, ah, where is it? Where's my camera? His name is Little Lobo. Um, I, you know, I've never actually met Little Lobo and I had the same question. I was like, is he a Lobo or is his name Lobo? Because when I see him, he looks more like a coyote, to, like a coyote to me. So he might be a coyote, uh, <laughs> but uh, his name is Lobo. Like, you know, that dude, Wolf Blitzer, like, He's not a he's not a wolf, but his name is Wolf Blitzer, which is kind of weird. So I'm thinking, Little Lobo, that's just his name. Thank and you, thank yeah. you for answering. I hope that helps. Yeah, I think it will. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna like that answer. I, I will definitely show him that. All right, what's our next question from students? Okay, in your picture on the Latinx Books, uh, Book Festival website, you are wearing a cowboy hat. This question is for <laughs> Carlos Aponte. Are you a cowboy as well as an author? And this is from Quez, third grade, Bronx, New York. Um, I'm not a cowboy, but I love anything. To, I love hats. I, I, I don't know what to say. I love hats and uh, uh, I, won, I think a few years ago, I found this beautiful cowboy hat in black, fell in love with it. And since then I've been buying hats everywhere. Like you see that corner, there's hats there. The hats in New Jersey, I have hats everywhere. So then every time somebody see me, why, why are you not wearing a hat? Or, let, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, a new, it's a thing for me now, wearing hats. <laughs> I think it's a good habit, I love hats too. All right, what's our next question? Oh, okay, so this question is for Juana Medina, and it's from Beck H, third grade, New Hampshire. Is your character like you when you were younger? And I'm guessing she's talking about Juana and Lucas. Yes, I think so too. Beck, that's a great question. Uh, yes, in many ways, Juana is like me uh, in terms of uh, asking a lot of questions about life and trying to figure out many things not always liking the answers I was getting from grown-ups. Um, so there are many, many things that uh, are very much like me. And then there are others where we differ a little. And that's the beauty of uh, using your creativity for a book, that you can, when it's fiction, you can take license to do different things and to create uh, new realities. So it was really fun to figure out how to make a, a story that people could relate to while telling and sharing a little bit about my personal life. That's good, yeah. It's a super special series, so that's a really cool Thank blend. Thank you. Our <laughs> next question is from Josh D, seventh grade in Massachusetts for Aksur and Neas. Did you have fun making your book and illustrating it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun, especially, uh, I love to draw backgrounds. I actually like to design and to put all the little details because I like to imagine like, oh, this city has to be like a real place or a place where people live. And the, uh, the writer of the book, the Sud Ambassador, he lives in Seoul, Korea. So he sent me photographs of all the places that Joseph and Dan visit in Korea. So this is the place going to go around. This is the place we're going to grab bottles. Here is going to be this park. He sent me a lot of references so I can draw this place I, I haven't been. I live in Mexico City, so I've never been in Seoul, Korea. And I also use a lot of Google Maps to be walking on the streets and be traveling and see the type of stores of the buildings so cool. that are in the city and they put it in the book. And 
So I'm excited now for the next book that is going to be in Zacatecas, Mexico. So I hope to travel to the end of the next year to Zacatecas and take yeah, pictures. Yeah, like you had a lot of fun. Yeah. So the answer is yes. I have, he had a lot of fun. It sounds like he had a great time. Um, okay, that was our last question from the children, from the children. Um, I have one more question for you guys um, about art making. And this is one of those fa favorite ones that I, I used to want to know, like, how do people make that? So what is your favorite art making tool? And we'll start with Raul and then go to Carlos, Juana, and then Axul. So what is your favorite art making tool or your favorite medium? Oh, and by the way, medium, sorry, before I, medium, just in case kids don't know what a medium is, is like the thing that you use to make the art. Oh, I thought you were about to start communicating with my abuelita or something. <laughs> That's a different kind of medium. I was like, ah, yeah. abuela. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, who is your favorite medium? No, just <laughs> well, um, so lately uh, I've been working on, on this series right here. This is uh, From the World of Vamos, and this series is called El Toro and Friends in Training Day. Um, it's like a luchador. And so uh, earlier over Thanksgiving weekend, I started to work on, on some uh, drawings. This is an original drawing right here. Oh, it's a wow. little large. Wow. It's uh, maybe, I don't know how long it is, but I work in these sketchbooks and um, I, I also just finished drawing El to, uh, Vamos, Let's, it's just the third Vamos book. It, it comes out September 21st. It's already headed to, to the printer. But I, here's one page wow. from it. Oh, that's it's called, beautiful. It's called Vamos, Let's Cross the Bridge. And it's all about <laughs> when I was a little kid and we'd cross over the Puente Libre to go to Juarez or to come back from Juarez and we'd get yeah. stuck on the puente, puente for like an hour. Oh, so so it's all about- Did you use, about, did you use like pencils? Did you yeah, use so, um, so I use a pencil to start, uh, okay. something like this or, or a, a, a regular sharpened pencil. I yeah. have a botella of tinta right here. Mm -hmm. I like to use this uh, ink here. This is called FW ink. It was actually invented by William Steig's brother for William Steig on his birthday because William loved to make um, uh, a uh, uh, fountain, uh, continuous fountain pen line drawings. It's and so, long. Can yeah, I can tell you a story about this ink, what they what they called FW ink in the family, but there's a, um, a, a curse word involved. So I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> I use this uh, brush here to, okay, to, cool. to ink it in. Can we get and a for fine up? details, I use a little pen. Let's well, see a my, close up of your brush. beautiful brush. Look at that fine tip, y'all. Imagine this me painting an <laughs> eye on the middle of my forehead here. I can see it. I can see the eye. I see your, your third eye. Yeah. And then Elaine... Elaine uh, does the, the coloring on the books, and um, she uses uh, Adobe Photoshop, but we okay. actually, we, we went down to El Paso and to Juarez uh, to visit family and, you know, hang out, and she, sometimes she'll use, like, and you could probably see here, she used actually photographs of the desert to, oh, cool. uh, oh, to color the ground and things like, oh, there I am, there I am no. walking with my son Raul in the desert. Oh, Raul the weird. fourth. The Raul the fourth, yeah. Cool, that's so cool. Um, who? Let me see the next person to ask for the tools. Carlos, you were next. What's your favorite tool? Your well, favorite I making I don't have with me what uh, I do have. A uh, um, I like to draw a lot. Of, I do a lot of sketches, so I do. Uh, I don't know if you know this called Tombow brush marker. Mm -hmm. It's do. a dual dual. I like I like to sketch with that a lot. And I've been doing also um, the um, acrylic markers too. So like I, I do all kind of stuff, you know, Posca. Yeah, I like to use Posca. Let me see if I have something here. Um, yeah, the Tombow ones have a long yeah. brush tip. And yes, do you exactly. Use do you use hats? To paint? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, I have posted on my Instagram me wearing a hat and sketching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it helps. I was going to yeah. ask about what music you guys listen to and stuff, but I think the hat is one of those things like, you know, how do you prepare yourself to the making of the art? And I think the hat's a good one. Yeah, hat's um, a good one. After Carlos, who was it supposed to go? I think it was Juana. Juana, you're next. What's your favorite art making tool? Fountain pens. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I love fountain pens. I've been, I mean, I use all sorts of brands, but um, 
I'm trying to find the camera here. Oh, this one. This, this one is a, it's a German one. Yeah, <laughs> these are German pens yeah. that uh, generally. I love this one. Kids in Germany and and um, and Switzerland use for writing for learning how to write because they're yep. so um, thick. Um, but the reason I use them is because I've put them through the washer more than once and they still work. So uh, they're, they're very sturdy. And, and that's so just like, just like, like William, just like William Steig William then, Steig. right? Oh, really? Just like it. <laughs> well, the, the, using the fountain pen. Using yeah. the fountain oh, I pen. thought that yeah. put, putting them through the laundry. The like, no, oh, no, 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 no. Aksur and you, what is your favorite? But you yes, have five minutes yes, left. I, so I what's your favorite? Pens. Uh, I feel a little bit embarrassed that I've been working exclusively digital since the last six That's years. Fine. I okay. used a Wacom Intuos tablet and I work everything in Adobe and Click Paint. Like for the way I work, I I love to have the shortcuts, uh, Control C, so I can go Control back. Z. Yeah. Control C for the kids, just so you guys know, Control or Command Z means undo. Yeah. I mean, so you can go back one step. And I'm with Axur. I love my undo. <laughs> go ahead. I, I love to have the tools. It's really weird that I am an artist, but there is no pencil or books here. Well, here, like, I don't have drawing uh, utensil except everything in my computer. I feel like comfortable <laughs> working there. No, that's great. I think everybody should figure out what it is that makes their work sing. So whatever yeah. it might be, if it's the fountain pen, if it's that brush, if it's Especially the now, animation. I, I, I have to have everything to work in the pipeline or animation, so everything has to be digital. Yeah, that's right. I've, You're a showrunner. Go ahead, bro. I've been drawing. I've been drawing the fourth lowrider book uh, uh, on uh, using Photoshop on my Cintiq, and it, it, uh, the first three lowrider books were drawn with ballpoint pens, and I was able to reconfigure an uh, an old nib pen uh, on Photoshop to make it look like a ballpoint pen. So. It's that's coming amazing. out nice. That's amazing. Oh, wow. That's so cool. That's, that's amazing. Raul, if I may, I remember you telling a, a beautiful story of why you decided to use the ballpoint pens for for uh, low riders in space. I don't know if you'd want oh, to share yeah, well, it. I, yeah, I found I, it so beautiful. I, well, thank you. So, yeah, when I was a kid, uh, wanting to become an artist, but not knowing any artist, you know, and also not having art supply stores or 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 knowing any artist personally, the only pen that I could get my hands on were ballpoint pens, ones with business names on them, you know, like uh, uh, Nikos Tacos or whatever. Uh, and so I drew all of my early drawings using big ballpoint pens. And then when finally the opportunity came for me to to uh, work on my first book. And being that the story was about friends who uh, found uh, objects to create their, their car, I decided to use a pen that every uh, person could get their hand on. And that was a ballpoint pen. And it's just to show uh, uh, kids that you don't need, you know, fancy schmancy art materials to make okay. awesome stuff happen. You already have that material on your desk, whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that, Raul. That's so cool. Thank you, Juana. <laughs> yeah, so much. No, for... I, I, it's, it's been so inspiring since I heard you, you know, you saying that during your prayer speech. I just felt like, oh, yes, we have it's to make true. sure children know that no. it doesn't matter, even if it's a stick in the sand, you can draw. Exactly. Yeah. True. And your pen, Juana, your, when I lived in Germany, your pen is ubiquitous. Like every child, that's like their big pen. I have yeah. some of those exactly. pens too. That's their big mm -hmm. pen too. Uh, I know it sounds fancy because it's a fountain pen, but it's like a it's like a two euro pen. You're less exactly. Yes. So um, yes. <laughs> thank you for attending our panel. No words. Story storytelling through pictures, and um, thank you for coming to the Latinx Kidlit Book Festival. I hope you have a great time, and thank you Axur and Carlos and Raúl and Juana for being here today. And yeah, I thank think you. that's it. Right? Thank you, thank you, Amanda. Amanda. Thank you. I'm getting the book with all of you. I'm buying all the stuff that you're doing. Yeah. And Same it's been you. amazing to, to meet Same. all of you. So fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. We can do Raul, like a week. Juana, oh, Axur, Andriana, wonderful oh. meeting you. Really Carlos, great. thank you so much for meeting you. Muchas gracias. One day, uh, one day we will meet in person, I hope. I would love so. that. I would love that. Yes.
We can do a wiggle book thing. Oh, for, I don't know if she wants to include, yes. like, you know, book promo. For Carlos, <laughs> you can stick his book digitally. Yes, fine. <laughs> <laughs>